Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tina and I am just so happy to be here with you guys. All right, so today I have a lot of cutting to do. I have a lot of packaging to do, but my reward is I get to put together a lot of fun layouts. So the layout that I'm going to do today, I am using up some of my supplies from this Summer Vibes Echo Park collection that I loved. And here are some of the layouts that I already created with it. This was a workshop and I went through how to remix this for zoo layouts using the Echo Park Animal Kingdom. So I'm happy to be adding a page to it because I actually need the page because this is for my trip to Mexico. All right, I'm going away at the end of the month and I love to have pre-done layouts. I like to get my selfie out and just print, print, print and put lots of pictures down, especially when it gets late at night and it gets a little punchy, right? All right, so um, I'm going to talk about first with you this triangle. Now, I did take one of my broad tip markers and edge around all of my cuts because I did that with my original workshop and, you know, why not stick with it? And I have some additional um, papers left over that I can also do some layouts while I'm away working with some quick and easy sketches. All right, we're going to do the triangles first because... I can't share the triangles with you. I could remake them and put them in, I guess. But I also really like to show how you can, um, I, I can share them in design space. These are SVG cuts, but it's real easy to do a triangle. So first, if you want to make these triangles on your design space, all you would do would be bring the triangle in and then you would size the triangle from top to bottom and then size the triangle from side to side, hit enter, and it will make this size. But today I thought I would share how you can also do these pretty quickly with just a manual cut and a cheat that I do. All right, so here's my triangle size, and you would need four of them, but you would want to watch your orientation for your paper. I made sure mine were all cut. All right, so these are an eight and seven eighths by four and three eighths uh, triangle. So four and three eighths this way, eight and seven eighths this way. I use a lot of eighth measurements. Um, it tends to make things go really well for me in design space, I've noticed. All right, so I would, if I was gonna manually cut these, I would create a template. This is what I call throwaway paper. I buy throwaway paper. It's paper I'm never gonna use. Sometimes if I buy paper, I end up with throwaway paper. It's a sheet that I'm like, mm-mm, no. Or it's paper that is a low quality um, that I get off of a clearance rack, maybe in a big pad of paper or something like that. And I don't care what it looks like because I really use it to create quick demos, um, do practice cuts on crickets and stuff like that. All right, so this is eight and seven eighths, four and three eighths. I would then just take to make the triangle and fold the piece of paper in half because it's throwaway paper, so we don't care, all right? This is the easiest way without doing any math to get to the center of your template. Then you just grab the piece that you wanna cut and you're just gonna slide it back the tiniest bit and grab a pencil and where you mark, oh, sorry, mark that score line with a pencil. It makes it a little easier. You're just gonna go right up and say, okay, there's my center point. Isn't that so much easier than trying to do math, especially when we would be ending up on like a 16th of an inch? All right, and then to make our triangle, this little tick mark that we made needs to be lined up in our cut groove along with the point of the side we're cutting. And we're just gonna kind of eyeball that, make sure we're good to go. I sometimes, if I'm worried about hitting a point, will drop my blade in the center and then come back and forth with it you're not. Now, this is the good paper, remember, because we've cut this out of the good paper. This is a great size triangle. It's a little smaller, but there's a layout right here on my channel that uses four of these in the corners, and you will have those, You'll and you'll have two of each to, to do two matching layouts. All right, we're going to put that tick mark right in the, um, the groove again, our cut groove, your cut line. There we go. I'm just going to drop it in the center. Give it a little double check up and back. And now we have the triangle that we need and we have these and you can, you know, swap those out for that layout. Um, 
basic shapes are really coming back right now in scrapbooking. I'm seeing a huge trend of people doing things with triangles and circles and diamonds. And I think that that's really cool. Um, erase it. I don't use these on my scrapbook paper. This is my favorite eraser right here. And this is what I use these Pentels. Um, I think they're more forgiving for the paper and they really take it off and they stay nice and clean. Um, and there you go. Your piece would be all ready to use. So I did that four times traced them with a marker. All right, and then the other measurement that I would like to give you is this background square that it is on. I chose to do some white because I have lots of white um, highlighted throughout this, and I love white. I gotta slide down, there we go, okay. This is nine and a half by nine and a half inch square. All right, I'll go through the other things as we put this together. This was a really um, interesting trip um, that we went on. Um, there were lots of things, but one of the things that it did is our, our, we didn't really get to spend the amount of time that we would like. Um, this was an incentive trip, and then some of it got struck, restructured when we got there. So we didn't get to spend the amount of time that we really wanted to, but now we've earmarked this location for a family vacation. My kids are all grown, so do what you gotta do to get them where you gotta get them, right? <laughs> That's why I love escape rooms, undivided attention. All right, we are going to put this, just center it all the way around. I'm gonna kind of eyeball mine. There we go. And now our triangles are gonna go in place. I'm gonna use very little of my adhesive and I work better if I start with the bottom one. I'm gonna use just small amounts because I may have to move them and I'm not gonna press them down until they're where I want them. And I can't remember my spacing, so don't put yours down if you're watching me right now till I get these on. I feel like I left about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch all the way around because they have gaps in the middle. So let me just get that down first. And then I'll share that with you. I wouldn't want you to make a mistake while I'm making a mistake. I'm really trying, uh, when you place them down, it's better to use the outer border and that one's a little short there we go that outer border will keep your pieces nice and straight and you have wiggle room I just want to get you kind of where I did I'm going to say I'm an eighth of an inch heavy but not a quarter of an inch hope that helps and that gave me um, spacing in the center you could just put them all right next to each other if you wanted to and um, have a bigger border around the outside there you go all set. Okay. Now I'm, for me, this is really kind of, like I said, these, these are, um, this was another layout that I need and I'm, I know I'm still going to need some more. Um, this is a one and a half inch piece and let me get you that. It is one and a half by yeah, five and three quarters. This is just a great way for me to add more of these papers are gorgeous in this collection. Um, but this is just a great way for me to add some extra kind of pieces that that come out the side and you can you can do it straight on like this or you can even tilt them and have them peeking out. I think I'm going to shove that in last actually. I love to paper tuck. I'm going to put my photo placeholders down so you can see how your pictures are going to look amazing on this layout. Look at this, just just really great. All right, I think we're gonna do this up here. And although it was not summer when I went, cause I went in February, March, I was like, I'm okay with that. I'll cover that in my journaling. All right, I think I'm gonna want this here, like more over to the center because I have that little piece sticking out. That extra added kind of a bonus. And these are smaller, so here we go. I'm just going to slide that underneath and I have it slightly on an angle. Let's add a little bit more right there. I've really loved this paper too. All the papers in here were just really good. I, I, you could just do, it led to, to being creative, I think for me, but I would have loved them for summer as well. All right. That is a three and a quarter by four and a quarter, six and a quarter, four and a quarter. Oh, and I have these on foam tape. Now I'm not gonna be adding any stickers to this kit. I will actually have a few of these available as like a limited edition. 
Um, but later on, if you did the workshop and you have the stickers or maybe you're putting this together, you can definitely add some stickers as well. And I will add some stickers. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is actually straighten this one here at the bottom instead of having it on the angle. And that way I'll have these two at the top on an angle. And I think that, yeah, that looks so much better. It really, it's it, so everything isn't scattered on that. Okay, I think that looks great. Let's go ahead and do our other one. So this one is all cut as well. And I like this. I have Vacay Vibes. And um, I have um, uh, three by four are the pocket cards that are included with, and I love that. They're actually part of the paper pack. Um, and they finish at three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Six and a quarter, four and a quarter. Uh, same piece again, one and a half by the, the five. All of these finish at three and a half by four and a half, and they're double matted. So this one here is three and a quarter, four and a quarter times three. These are just three quarter inch pieces to bring the waves over to here. And then I decided to bring in these really sunset kind of colors. So this is the color that's up in there. All right, let's go ahead and put this together. These are just three and a quarter by 12s. And I did the same thing with that marker. I just used the broad tip and traced around all of my pieces. Look at this. Isn't that so cute? If you wanted to um, document, like if bathing suit season is a thing for you with your family and you go and all the kids get new swimsuits, boy, the things I would go back and scrapbook. But that used to be a real thing for us. Uh, we had a pool for many, many years. And, um, you know, we would all have to go get new swimsuits, in particular the kids. And I would love to, like, go through why they were picking out the swimsuits that they were picking out. Like, what drew their attention to it, whether it was a favorite character that year or anything. But that paper would be so much fun to do that with. Okay, and see, just the same thing, like, having the colors come across there, I felt like kind of sunset. All right, I'm gonna start with this piece here first and eyeball it. And just make sure my paper's in my grid there. And I want the, about the center of this to be at six inches, that's all. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. And then it's a half of an inch, maybe a little shy each way. And let's get you a measurement on the big red piece. That floral big red piece is five and a half inches. So five and a half by 12 is this one right here. I really like this particular sketch. All right, I have the polka dots up here because I have the polka dots down here. And I'm just kind of centering, centering it in the um, amount of space I have left over. This was also good. Yeah, so I'm off on my piece. I normally am when I try to eyeball center. We'll see if I can lift. I'm just gonna move it up the smallest amount. There we go. So I, I try not to rub everything down until I'm done. All right, a little bit on this one. And since this one kind of did a little bit of a side angle, I'll do the same for this. All right, I'm gonna keep this one straight. I'm going up pretty high and it's coming over the the wave paper there. Go ahead and put those photo place cards in so you can kind of see. Your pictures would obviously be darker than the white and I think that's one of the reasons why the photos are really gonna just pop and look amazing on this. There goes so many photos. This holds a lot of photos. I can usually tell what size my photos are when I'm looking at my layouts, but this also helps me when I'm using pre-done layouts. It makes it really easy for me to know the, the numbers and the sizes that I need to print. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm printing lots of photos. I will pull this out and say, okay, this is for Mexico. 
and I'll have to pop a video in here on how I organize an album or a trip. I have a, a spreadsheet that I've created, but I'll be able to go in and actually pick all my topics out. So if this one, for example, is maybe we went a walk on the beach and we took some pictures of the resort, or maybe we did a sunset one night, I will know I need this many photos to do that particular layout and I can just kind of print them off and I know exactly what I want. It really does help me. I do try to pull my photo placeholders off so I can reuse them. We don't want to be wasteful. All right, we're going to go this way, just like this. Overlap a little bit on the pictures here because we overlapped a little on the pictures there. I'm just deciding if I want them this way or this way. And I think I want them this way. Really quick layout and you can throw it together. And I have a few size change um, ideas for you just in case, foam tape again, on this piece here. Um, if you don't have a five and a half inch piece, then make the two, this five and a half by 12, make these two a little bit bigger. You can take those up to an inch or an inch and a half and still get, you know, that size span that you need as long as you're a little bit bigger than um, your mats, you're all good. If you have a really narrow piece that you're gonna build, lots of two by twos. You could do two rows of two by twos. Um, I love to do two by twos. People ask me, sometimes people struggle with that. This is just a little off. Um, sometimes people struggle with the two by twos. I like to do close up, like if I took a close up shot and it's really close, especially in the digital age, right? If you're doing a sunset, for example, you probably took 45 pictures of the sunset, putting down 12, even 18 of them in two by twos is, is, you know, it's amazing. All right, here we go. Ta-da, right? All done, all things good. I had some of the enamel dots left. I really love the Echo Park enamel dots. They're in the right order for me for how I like to use mine. You get the least amount of the big. It goes least of the big, then you get the medium amount of the medium and the most of the small. So it just, it works for me. I'm gonna use straight across here. So we're gonna take this orange one. And I want to make sure that when I do my pieces, they're going to end up where I want them. Okay, there we go. I have a small green one that escaped and was at the bottom there. And we'll put a yellow one right here. Oops, meant to grab that medium, that medium yellow right there. I'm going to work with three sets of three at first. And... This medium one right here is gonna go, you know what? I kinda don't love that right there. There we go. I'm gonna need to switch my bling out for how I'm putting it. I'm gonna do the blue one here. There we go. And switch to the medium green. Let's see. Hmm. I don't want them across from each other. Sometimes I overthink the smallest things, but with this polka dot paper, it's really throwing me. So I just feel like it's one of those things. I'm switching back to the yellow and instead of trying to do one down here, this will probably be a place where I put a sticker. I wanna switch that off. Look, everything went easy peasy and then we get to where we're doing the, um, which should be the simplest, adding our bling and I will overthink that. All right, there we go. I have three there, and now I want to use my last big one right here. Get a little pop of orange in there. Yeah, I think I'll like that. I'm going to spread these ones out just a little bit more. There we go. And now I have these left over. And this is my favorite size bling to use on my cards. So I, although I'm going to put just a couple, I'm going to try to use them, you know, just to save a few because um, I am making a couple of cards out of this. I'm going to just kind of put one here and then offset the orange with a blue, just two right there. That looks cute. And then I'm going to add two right here. I'm going to use the yellow, trying to get it on the there 
and then a green one right here. There we go. That's going to do it for me. I will save, I'll save these little four that I have. I'm making a special card, so that'll be the perfect amount to, to add some of that. Look at that. This is just a really fun um, layout. And one of the things I like to do is kind of dive into a sketch. It's so easy with these Echo Park papers because they give you these wonderful pocket cards. And I love that. I love having it included in the paper pack. I think it increases the value of it. I have an entire series with this collection um, where I showed it. You're really looking, if you wanna see all of the measurements, let me grab. If you want to really have all of the measurements of my full workshop, I did a remix. That's what I call when I take my one um, workshop or layout or card, whatever it happens to be, and I remix it with other papers. So I recreate it in other papers. If you check out the Animal Kingdom collection that I have on here, uh, videos one, two, and three, remake all of these. So if you want to go through and you want to do this collection, um, I hope that you guys really like it and you like this bonus layout as well. Feel free to leave me any questions or, I don't know, maybe just a hey there, hello down in the comments. And if you liked this video, found it useful in any way, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out so much here in the YouTube community. Thank you guys for letting me share this crafty time with you today. I wish you all good things as you craft. What a wonderful way we have to enjoy something we love so much while we are just able to preserve our memories and pass our stories on to future generations. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.